Hi everyone, welcome to the second lecture on advanced mechanics. This lecture is dedicated to kinematics of deformation and motion. Uh, learning objectives. You're going to learn about Eulerian and Lagrangian description of deformation, deformation gradients, finite straight tensors, infinitesimal deformation theory, rotation and stretch, velocity and acceleration gradients. And here is a motivation for you based on my personal work. Okay, I forgot to introduce myself. I am Hadi Sadati and I'm doing soft medical robotics uh, with what we are going to learn in uh, these series of lectures you can design soft robots to interact safely with soft organs in surgical scenarios or any other medical scenarios for example here we have a stiff flop a stiffness controllable flexible and learnable manipulator for surgical operation I work on that during my PhD. Here is a, a miniaturized version of uh, the same um, continuum robot uh, being used for a mock surgical uh, application. Um, here is a phantom abdomen. Uh, we have multiple insertion points and the flexible robots uh, helps us uh, navigate uh, inside the inflated abdomen safely and um, in a dexterous uh, manner. And here is my uh, current um, research. It's concentric tube robots, CTRs, and uh, that's a part of ERC Pioneer project. It's a, a preocularly uh, navigated uh, extraceptive snake robot for novel retinal interventions. Um, here we have tubes in, instead of uh, bulky uh, silicone robots. Uh, in, interaction of uh, those tubes uh, results in um, interesting deformation of the robot. And here you see again a miniaturized version close to a phantom eye that uh, we try to show the workspace of our robot. I hope it gives you uh, these uh, give you uh, good motivation uh, for the material that's going um, to be presented during this lecture. First part of the lecture is introduction, body configuration, and motion. Introduction: Kinematics of a material body, uh, for example, fluid or solid or gas represents their displacement and deformation. Kinematics of rigid material is described based on deformation field and strain. You see, for example, our robot is deforming here, and as a result, uh, we get strains um, propagated through this structure. A strain describes the transition between undeformed, the straight, and deformed configuration, the bent configuration in this example. Kinematics of fluid or gas material is described based on velocity field and strain rate. For example, here we have a mitral valve and uh, blood flow through it uh, can be modeled based on the velocity field of the material, while the deformation of the mitral valve itself can be described based on the deformation field of uh, the material. A strain rate describes the material strain time derivative. So when we talk about velocity or strain rate, we are talking about time derivative of uh, deformation field and a strain. During the lecture, we're going to use a uh, pepper family to help us describe the concept. Okay, let's start with body configuration. Body configuration is a set of particles or material points, capital X, whose position at the time t can be specified with respect to a fixed origin in physical space. So, um, for example, we have a sphere here, and it's not deformed, it's in the reference configuration, 
and uh, the position of all the points in that sphere can be described uh, as the body configuration with respect to this reference frame. Capital X is the reference or undeformed configuration. We call it material frame. Uh, for example, it's initially at time zero from which all displacements are reckoned. So the initial undeformed configuration. Uh, X is the body current or present or deformed configuration. We call it a special frame at time t. It's defined by a mapping function to the reference frame, capital X. You see our sphere is deformed and moved now and the location, the um, body configuration in the deformed uh, state is uh, shown by lowercase letters and it's defined based on a mapping uh, to uh, the original location of those points in the undeformed configuration. Okay, now we can define the forward map which says the deformed case is um, can be found based on a mapping uh, as a function of the, the undeformed case. So X is equal to a function of capital X and we can define an inverse map. Uh, capital X can be defined as in, an inverse map of X itself. Here you see that uh, the forward mapping uh, gets us from the reference to the current uh, deformation or configuration and the inverse map uh, take us, uh, takes us from uh, the deformed configuration back to the uh, reference or undeformed configuration. Let's talk about body motion and particle path now. Body motion is the time sequence of displacements resulting in various configurations. So if X is um, a function of capital X, we can define particle path or particle trajectory in time as this. Uh, X of P, the uh, particle path uh, associated with point P uh, can be found based on the same mapping as a function of capital X of P, the initial uh, position of that particle. You see here the particle path, it can be, uh, it can have arbitrary shapes and uh, the same equation uh, by replacing T for any time that you want uh, gives you the um, configuration of the position of that particle at that given time. Um, so easily we can define particle velocity uh, V and acceleration A as the time derivative uh, and second um, time derivative of uh, the forward map for that given particle. Just note the difference between a path and a displacement. The path gives you uh, the position of a point at a given time. And as a result, you can have an arbitrary curly path from an initial position to a final position. But the displacement uh, tells you uh, the difference between the initial and final position. That's it. It doesn't give you any information about the path that the particle is taken to get to that final, uh, final point or final position. Pay attention to those uh, um, different uh, definitions. Here's an example for you. Uh, it says let the body motion be given by uh, this mapping function. X1 is a capital X1 plus T square capital X2, X2 is capital X2 plus T square capital X1, and X3 remains unchanged, equal to capital X3. Uh, it says determine the path of the particle originally at X, uh, at, at capital X, initial position, one to one, and the velocity and acceleration uh, of the same particle at uh, T equal to two seconds. Okay, let's start. Uh, with uh, the um, with um, finding the 
uh, the formation, uh, the uh, configuration map for the uh, given um, particle position. Uh, pay attention that it's capital X, so uh, we're talking about undeformed state now. Okay, thankfully, uh, we already have the map uh, for X as a function of capital X, so simply we uh, substitute uh, the coordinate of uh, the undeformed um, uh, case into the mapping that we have, and we get X1 equal to 1 plus 2T squared, X2 equal to 2 plus T. Uh, t squared and x3 equal to 1. Okay, um, let's um, eliminate t between these um, um, three uh, relations uh, to find uh, the particle path. We get x1 minus 1 divided by 2 equal to x2 minus 2 and x3 is 1. Uh, so basically, uh, it says that the particle uh, moves um, on a, a straight line. If you pay attention, this part of the equation is a straight line. And the equation for that straight line is x1 minus 1 equal to 2x2 minus 4. And it's on a plane um, with x3 being constant equal to 1. Uh, here I, 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 I drew uh, that, so in x1, x2, x3 coordinate, uh, here is a plane with uh, x3 uh, equal to uh, 1, that's a constant, and uh, that's the straight line that represents x1 minus 1 equal to 2x2 minus 4. That's the solution for uh, part 1. Okay. For part two, the velocity and acceleration, we simply need to calculate the time derivative of um, x uh, for uh, the given uh, um, particle uh, position, capital X, 1, 2, 1. So uh, V is a partial x, a partial t, and in our case, it is um, it's two T X two for V one. For V two, it is two um, T X one. And for V3, it's zero. For the acceleration, uh, we need to um, differentiate it once more with respect to time. So A1, uh, the acceleration around along axis X1 is partial V1 partial T, uh, which is 2X2, A2 is 2X1, and a3 is 0. So by just replacing uh, t equal to 2 in the above relations, we get v equal to um, um, 8, 4, 0, a vector, uh, met per second, meter per second, and a equal to 4 to 0 meter per square second. So pay attention that we uh, substituted t equal to 2 here and x1, capital X1, capital X2, capital X3, based on the given location of the particle, 1 to 1. And um, it resulted the velocity and acceleration of the particle. Okay, some properties of a particle. Body particles are not independent and cannot occupy same position at the same time. So mapping uh, the a mapping for configuration should be single valued and continuous. Two particles arbitrary close in initial configuration remain arbitrary close in all configurations. 
So the mapping have continuous spatial and temporal derivative. Uh, the, so the derivation of the mapping with respect to uh, space, x, y, z, or time, t, uh, remains continuous. And inverse map has the same properties as uh, the forward map. It can reverse the motion back to the reference configuration. Um, so the existence of this inverse map is guaranteed by Jacobian determinant relation. So the, for, the Jacobian of the forward map um, should uh, never be uh, zero. So we can define the inverse map. Finally, here is a, uh, an example question for you to uh, try before uh, jumping into the second part of this lecture. Uh, again, we, uh, the, the body motion uh, is given um, for x as a function of capital X. Uh, it first asks uh, to find uh, the inverse map for capital X as a function of x. And then as an activity, uh, it asks you to determine the velocity and acceleration of a particle with x equal to 1, 0, 1 at time t equal to 2 seconds. Just pay attention here, the current position of the particle is given. In the previous example, uh, we had capital X, the initial position of the uh, particle given. So here you need to use the inverse map to calculate the velocity and acceleration. Okay, let's uh, work out the first part of this uh, example. Uh, we invert uh, X um, as a function of capital X. So uh, from the top uh, equation, I find X1 equal to X1 minus T square X2 and substituting that into the second equation, I get X2 equal to capital X2 plus T square multiplied by X1 minus uh, T square capital X2. Uh, so I can find capital X2 here based on X1 and X2, which gives me this relation. And X3, um, and I already, and I replace X2 uh, in this relation to get X1 as a function of X. Um, simplifying the relation, it gives me this uh, final relation. And X3 is X3. So that's how um, I did the inverse map in this case. You can alternatively um, solve it as a um, set of uh, algebraic equations and uh, calculate uh, and form the coefficient matrix, calculate the inverse of that matrix and uh, form the inverse map. But I leave that to you to explore.